Hello and welcome to another edition of Luminar Coffee Break. I'm your host, Vanelli. Now, our topic today is how to capture and organize your own skies so you can use them for sky replacement. All right? Well, let's dive right in. So, uh, these are actually two clouds that Angela, my co host, gave me. Um, from here, the first one, or one on the right, is actually shot with an iPhone. So, you can see it's a JPEG. And the other sky was shot with her DSL, DSLR camera. Now, there's an entire section. Let me pull it up for you here. There's an entire section on our website. And actually, I'll make it easier for you. I'm showing you how to photograph these skies. So, if you just jump into the user guide. Let me hide this for you and you type in a sky replacement right here is the guideline so this is a guideline my suggestion review it before you go out shooting download this as a PDF file and put it on your phone now you have it with you when you're out in the field and when you're out shooting it actually shows you how to capture the correct skies now again I'm going to show you the two that we were using. One is, a, is just a typical iPhone uh, shot, a smartphone, and the other is a professional DSL, DSLR. Now, once we have the shots, we have to do some prep work with them to make them look really good so we can add them to our library. So again, in the help menu, check out the user guide. Here are the best practices and how to capture the sky. One huge big piece of advice I'll give you, use a wide angle lens, all right? Use a wide angle lens because that's gonna give you a more realistic um, proportion of the sky. So that you'll notice she did here. In fact, we can even look at the raw file. And she, well, she shot it with a 72. She shot it with a 72 millimeter lens. Uh, at F4, all right? So, let's start with the iPhone shop. Now, we need a clean horizon line, so we're gonna get rid of all of this here. So from edit, we'll come over, and we'll crop that right out. I'm gonna use free. So I'm gonna bounce up just a little bit, I like it right about here. See now, that's a really good clean line. The only problem is I have this here. So I could just bring it in and clone that out or just go up a little bit more. Yeah, right about there. All right, let's do that. All right, so there we have this. Now we have that set. Let's enhance it a little bit, all right? So we we cropped it. Now, if I zoom in at roughly uh, 200%, it's an iPhone shot. It, there's going to be digital noise. So let's attack that first. Ooh, look at that. Look how we clean up that noise. And by the way, quick tip, when you're working with the denoise tool, Make sure you zoom in to, to at least 100 to 200%, so you can actually see the results. I'll move the color up just a little bit. I don't see any color artifacts, but I like to move that up a bit. For the advance, I feel we're fine right where we're at. Let's give it a shot. Excuse me. Here we go. Good, all that looks good. Great. Now, I like where we're at, but I wanna come over here to enhance, and, oh, that's way too much. Let's bring it right about here, and of course, X and AI. Okay, I like that. That, that, that looks good right about there. So here we are before, 
and after. You know what? Let's add a little structure or detail to it. Not too much. All right, that looks good. Now that I have it set, okay, so we enhanced the sky, we fixed it, but keep in mind, these results will only be shown inside Luminar. What we have to do now is export it. So and when I export it, then all of these changes we've made, we burnt right into the image. So I'm going to come into the export, save it to disk, and I'm going to keep full size. Now, I'm going to put it back into my folder. So I'll come back over to my C drive, photography, here's assets. Now here's Angela Skies. I'm going to right click, I'm in Windows, right click, new folder, and let's call these complete. Or edited, whatever you want. So now they're still in the same location, but I distinguish between the one that was unedited and now the one that is edited. Select that, and let's give it a uh, final. So now that we know that we've um, exported this, we leave it, leave it as a JPEG or a TIFF, that's entirely up to you. I'm going to leave it right now as a JPEG and click export. All right. Let's give it a second. Now, so let's recap what we just did. You went out, you followed the guidelines to take your absolute best shots. You got it. You come back inside Luminar. We're going to enhance those images ahead of time. Then we have to export it to make sure we lock in the changes. And now we have it. So if I come back over to my catalog, here's Angela Skies. Right underneath it, notice there's the sky we just enhanced. Great. Now we're good to go. So let's see it in action. Let's come down here and do a sky replacement. Ooh, this is a complicated one. All right, so let's try this. Edit. Here we go. I want to select the sky. I'm going to come all the way to the bottom. And I want to add my own sky. So select all skies. Come to the bottom. Click the plus icon. Now here's Angela's skies. Here's the one that she took. Here's one that we edited. Now let's bring it in. Um, Robert, while it's, oh, look at that. Robert asks, is there any advantages to JPEG instead of TIFF? That's a good question. Um, TIFF, keep, okay, so JPEG is lossless, loss technology, um, is a loss format. In other words, lossy format. You can actually lose some of your pixels when you're saving a JPEG. TIFF keeps all those pixels and they don't throw them away. So it's lost less. So lossy is JPEG. TIFF is a higher quality, but with anything else, when it comes to higher quality, it means it's going to be a larger file size. So in theory, TIFF is a better way to go. If you're concerned with uh, large files, stay with JPEG. All right. So here we are. Look at this before and after. So. I believe this is New York City. So Angela's California Sky did a pretty good job here in New York City. All right. So now that we have that set, let's come over here. And here's with the, the, the new features of Luminar AI with Update 2. Is now you're able to look and see your skies. And you have with folders. From here... You can build your own custom, which we did down here. You can add it. You can add a single sky just by click, clicking the plus icon, like we did. Or if you have an entire group of skies, then you would come down and open up your library, and here's where you would add all those skies. Keep in mind, we recommend no more than 50. Is any more than 50? It just bogs down the system. 
and you can take these in and out. So if, let's say, I'm not finding myself using the Milky Way as much. Now, remember, when I brought these in, these are copies. I didn't put the originals here. So I can delete this, and I know that my clouds are safe, or my skies are safe in another folder. So I can come through and just delete any of these that I want, or uh, let's get rid of the Milky Way, or I can add to them. So let's add to it. And this is where I save, or I keep my skies in my pictures folder or my photography folder. I have assets. Under assets, here's skies. Now I could pick any one of these skies here. Let's do um, some night skies because we got rid of some of the Milky Way shots. So ooh, let's grab this one. And we'll grab some of the stars. Now I'm just holding down the control key as I'm clicking. So this way I can select multiple uh, skies at once. Now that I have them, right click, copy. Now I'm going to go into the folder, right click, paste. And if some of the clouds were already there, they'll ask me if I want to replace it or skip it. I'll just skip it. There it is. So now I've added the 13 skies to my custom skies. All right. So if I come over here, I can select all skies and, and look through. Or, like we just did, I can come down here to my own custom skies. And the 13 skies that I have in my library will be here. All right, and then uh, we select them. Now, we were talking about this before. Keep in mind, when you add skies to, to an image, the sky itself, it should match. The, the sky itself should look like, yeah, that sky belongs in that particular image. If I were to put the Milky Way shot into that, this scene here, it just, it just totally gonna look fake. It's not going to look the way we want it to. So that's why it's extremely important to make sure that we match the skies to the image that we want to replace it with. All right? Hello, Steve from Wales. All right. So we have all that set, and it was pretty simple. We go out. You see a beautiful sky that you love. Take your shots of them. Bring them back in. Let me show you one more thing, by the way, while I did that. When you do bring them in, you have a choice. Here's a catalog. Um, these are all the skies I have. Not all of them. But th these are the skies I have in my assets folder. So if I want to go through and just look at my skies, here's a great way I can look at this and see which skies I want to add to any of my other scenes. And like I showed you before with Angela's, Angela's orig original, and then, <clears throat> excuse me, the completed one is right here. All right? Awesome. Let's take one more quick question. Okay, Robert says, PNG, no. With the uh, AI sky replacement, it's either JPEG or TIFF. JPEG or TIFF. The PNG is great when we're dealing with textures, because you have the transparency. So try to avoid PNG unless you desperately need the transparent, transparency, all right? Well, guys, thank you so much. Now, coming up tomorrow from 7 a.m. Eastern Time, straight through till 9 p.m., till 9 p.m. Eastern Time, we're going to have a full day of in-depth Luminar AI, um, and it's going to be awesome. You can check it out. Go to insiders.skylum.com, insiders.skylum.com, and you'll see the information. In fact, let me pull it up for you real quick. Once I get it up, there we go. I'll share my screen. 
here we are. All right, so AI Insiders, and if you come over to the events, you'll see Deep Dive right here. And it's a Zoom event. You can check if you're going. I'm going to go. Um, you check that you're going, <laughs> um, and you can add it to your calendar from here. So again, since you're part of the inside, since you're part of Luminar AI, go ahead. If you're not signed up, sign up for Insiders. In fact, let me move this down. There we go. Insiders.skylum.com. Insiders.skylum.com. Check out the event. And then from there, come join us. Like I said, it starts at 7 a.m. with Rich Harrington and myself greeting everyone. Then throughout the day, we'll have special guests coming in and everything you want to know about Luminar AI will be talked about and you'll be able to ask questions during the live show. All right? Well, guys, thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you at the next Coffee Break.